the kiddos, today we're going to talk about the law of multiple proportions. We, you've probably already talked about the law of definite proportions or Proust's law. Today we're going to talk about the law of multiple proportions or what is sometimes called Dalton's law. Um, the idea behind this is pretty straightforward. We're going to talk real briefly about the idea and I'll put the definition up. And then we'll do a little bit of math to see how you might work a potential problem that would look like that. So law of multiple proportion says that if you've got two compounds that have the same elements in them, okay, so hydrogen and oxygen and hydrogen and oxygen, or carbon, hydrogen, carbon, hydrogen, two, two different compounds, same elements, then what the law of multiple proportion says is that if you compare the two elements to each other, okay, and that if you reduce it down so that you've got the same amount of one of the elements, and so we're going to do that for hydrogen here in this case, that the ratio of the other two elements to each other should be able to be expressed in whole, small whole number ratios. That's essentially what it is, and I'll write that definition out for you here in a second. So what that means is that if we reduce this down mass-wise to what hydrogen, the mass of hydrogen for each case, and compare the oxygen to it, that that should be a small whole number ratio. So really briefly, let me show you what that looks like. We know that the mass of hydrogen here is 2, and that oxygen is 16. Again, that's a molar mass thing. If you don't know where I'm pulling those numbers from, that's from the periodic table. That's from the periodic table. That's from another video. So we got a 2 there also, and oxygen is 16, but since I have two of them, that then is a 32. And so if we then reduce that down to 1 for the hydrogens, okay, so I'm going to say that that's a 1 to 8, and that would be then a 1 to 16 over here. That's just me reducing it by 2. Then if we talk about what are the ratios of the oxygens to each other in the different compounds, okay, and while that is an 8 to 16 ratio, or we could say that that is a 1 to to 2 ratio between these two compounds. That makes really solid sense because I've got one oxygen here, I've got two oxygens there, and of course that essentially is what the law of multiple proportions is going to come out to be. Okay, so let's look at another example that's not quite as clear cut maybe um, as that previous one. So if we look at the carbons here, each carbon is 12, and so that gives me a 24, okay, and then my hydrogens are at 4, because each hydrogen is a 4. Again, 24, and that would be a 6, okay? So the carbons are at the same ratio, okay? They're, they're, essentially, that would be a 1. My hydrogens are not, okay? They're at a 4 to 6 ratio, which we could just say that. That is the smallest whole number ratio. It's 4 to 6. And of course, that's why it would come out to be 4 and 6 here for our subscripts. Now, if you're like, well, that's a little bit confusing. I'm not real sure where you went there. Again, the law of multiple proportions is very simply stating that we should be able to reduce things down to these small whole number ratios. We can do it from mass, which is what we have here, to get to the smallest whole number, which essentially is going to come out to be per atom or per mole, depending on how we want to characterize that for us in the formula. Again, this goes back to the law of definite proportions where the definite proportions were that, hey, we had to have whole numbers here. Multiple proportion is saying between different compounds that have the same elements in them that the relationship between the elements should then be a small whole number ratio. The relationship between the same element and different compounds is going to reduce down to that. So let me put up the definition real quick so that you can see it and then we'll work a problem so that you can get a little bit more clarification on how that actually works. So definition, pause the video maybe, give yourself a second to write this down. We just talked about this, but this is the definition of it. And, and the law of multiple proportions is sometimes referred to as Dalton's law. Obviously John Dalton, the guy that came up with our sort of initial five points of Dalton's theory that was really the, the basis of us going from back from Democritus and then doing the experiments sort of in the 16, 1700s and then getting to some idea of like, hey, what is matter actually made of? And of course, Dalton is going to sort of lead us down that path that it's made of these small particles called atoms. So when, when the same two elements form more than one compound, the ratio of the second element compared to the first one by mass, 
is going to be in a ratio of small whole numbers. Okay, and you're like, whoa, that's a lot. And again, the, the easiest thing that I always tell students just to think about is say, hey, H2O, H2O2, what's the ratio? If we mass this out and, and essentially said we reduce the hydrogens down to one, what would be the ratio of the oxygens to each other? And it would be one to two. And you're like, well, it says by mass, what's 16 to 32, which of course is one to two, small whole numbers. And essentially, it's gonna be a way for us to reduce those masses down and be able to get us to the subscripts. And the law of multiple proportions, remember, is comparing it between two different compounds that have the same elements. Law of definite proportions is essentially saying, that's my formula, okay? So, let's erase this, let's look at a problem and see how we might mathematically have to figure this out. Here's the good news for you. You're probably not gonna have to do a whole ton of math with the law of multiple proportions. Okay, so let's look at a problem that's gonna lead us back to the idea of multiple proportions here. Phosphorus forms two compounds with oxygen. Compound A contains 4.13 grams of phosphorus and 3.2 grams of oxygen. Compound B contains 4.48 grams of phosphorus and 5.8 grams of oxygen. What's the lowest whole number ratio of P? The good news is for many of you all is that you like to work problems out in ratio and proportion and that's pretty much all it's ratios and proportions, okay? So it's pretty easy to set it up like that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna essentially reduce our oxygens down to being one gram each, okay? And so we're gonna, we're gonna work that out and say, okay, so I've got 4.13 grams of phosphorus to 3.2 grams of oxygen. And I wanna see how many grams of phosphorus that is. So X grams of phosphorus per one gram of oxygen. It's easier if you reduce that first element or the other element, the one that you're not trying to compare, which is oxygen in this case, to one. So we're gonna ratio and proportion that out. And remember, cross multiply. Okay, I don't really even need to do that, right? Because that's a one. So, but we can throw that over and that's one. That's gonna equal X. So 4.13 divided by 3.20. That's gonna give us 1.29 grams of phosphorus. Okay, that's not the answer. That's the first part of the answer, right? That is compound A. Probably should have put that at the beginning. So then let's work out B real quick. Same scenario. Okay, we've got 4.48 grams of phosphorus over 5.80 grams of oxygen. I'm looking for my phosphorus again, compared to one gram of oxygen. Again, you can cross multiply, but it's not really necessary. I'm gonna divide those two things out. And I'm going to get, for this one, we're gonna get 0.772 grams of phosphorus. Now at that point, you're like, I didn't get a whole number for anything, how does that work? Okay, well remember that what we're doing is, law of multiple proportions, we're comparing the amount of phosphorus in compound A and compound B and trying to see what the ratio is to each other. So to find a ratio, the best thing to do is to try to get it to one, okay? And so what you should do in each of those cases then is divide by the smallest one. So divided by 0.772, divide by 0.772, that's gonna reduce to one, okay, which is what we want. And then that then is going to give us 1.66 to one, that's my ratio. And you're like, that's not a whole number ratio, Arnold. And you are correct, it's not. So, so I've gotta find some least common multiples and the least common multiples there, two isn't gonna work, right? So that's not gonna get me there um, because two is gonna be what, 3.33 or something like that. But however, if I multiply this by three, that's gonna give me five. And then of course, whatever I multiply that by to make it a whole number, I have to multiply the second thing. And so that's three. And so what that means is that I'm left then with a five to three ratio, which is a small whole number ratio. And so the ratio of phosphorus in compound A to compound B is five to three is my lowest whole number ratio. Now, are you gonna have to work a lot of math problems like that? Probably not. Um, I, you, we might work a couple in class, but there's a small chance that you might see something like that on a test asking you to explain the law of multiple proportions mathematically, and that's how you would work it out, okay? Get everything reduced down to, to put your first element to one, get how much of each, the second element you have in each compound, divide by the smallest, 
and then get your ratio. You will see later as we do a lot more of the stuff that this relates directly back into um, empirical formulas. And in fact, this is sort of how we find empirical formulas. And so this will pop up again and you'll see it in a different way that might make it a little bit clearer. All right. Thanks, kiddos.